Tzvachim, Yud Beis Vav. They would carry them on poles. When those who have entered, when, when those in front have emerged beyond the wall of the courtyard and those in the rear have not yet emerged, those in the front contaminate their garments with Tumah, while those in the rear do not contaminate their garments with Tumah until they emerge. When both these and those are emerged, both these and those contaminate their garments with Tumah. Rabbi Shimon says, neither these nor those contaminate their garments with Tumah until the fire catches on to most of them. And once the meat has become charred, the one who burns them does not contaminate his garments with Tumah. If one slaughters and offers up an offering outside the temple, he is liable for the slaughter and liable for the offering, uh, offering up. Rabbi Yossi, oh. sorry, I don't have Rabbi Yossi Bar something something changed. Okay, if a slaughter, uh, if one slaughters and offers up an offering outside the temple, he is liable for the or slaughter and liable for the offering, uh, offering up. Rabbi Yossi Ben Gili says, if he slaughtered it within the temple and offered it outside, he is liable. But if he slaughtered it outside and offered it up outside. He is not liable, since he has not offered up anything but a disqualified offering outside the temple. They said to him, even when one slaughters within the temple and offers it up outside, as soon as he takes it outside the temple, he has disqualified it. And a person contaminated by Tuma who ate either holy foods, which would terminate, or holy foods, which would eat tahor, is liable. Rabbi Yossi ben Gili says, if one who has Tume ate that which is tahor, he is liable, but if he ate, but, but if one who is tame ate that which is tame, he is not liable, since he has not eaten anything but that which is already tame. They said to him, even a person who is tame who ate something which is tahor had rendered it tame as soon as he touches it. But a person who is tahor, tahor who is holy, who ate holy food, which is tame, is not liable, for one is liable only for personal tumor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gimel, Chomer Bashchita Mi Baalia. So, Remember, there are two separate acts involved in uh, in in bringing a korban, which make you liable for bringing it outside the mikdash. Okay, one is the shkita, two is the actual uh, putting it putting of the flesh or, or, or on the or, or on the mizbech. Okay, now there's a stringency when it comes to shkita that is not on halah. Okay, ba'aliyah and there's another stringency in the other direction. Okay, the, the stringency of shkita is that if a person takes a um, takes a, uh, a korban animal and shechts it outside for the for the purposes of giving it to uh, of honoring a, a guest or something like that, so just for a regular person, right? He is chayav uh, um Okay, well, not not it's not for the sake for the sake of Hashem. He just wanted to uh, just shift it for a person. He's still chayev. If he did it, but maybe he's chayev kares. And shogeg, he still has to bring a chatas. Okay, for for shkotechotz. Vahamale lehediot pator. But if somebody uh, burns kodshim bachutz for uh, um, for the honor of uh, of some other person and not for and not for Hashem, he's pator from kares and from a chatas. Well, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I understand this. There are two stringencies to slaughtering. Uh, Oh, so the stringency of slaughtering is that one that if one slaughters for a commoner, so I'm, I'm going up there and I want to have I have a korban I'm giving I want I um I want to give him to to, to slaughter. So, so I want to eat it. I want to have it for supper. He and he and he's liable that they they he's come. Right, so he's liable for shkute chutz, right? Because but, this is a korban animal that was supposed to have brought been brought in the mikdash and shechting it. You're you're chayev. Would they have a katas or something? Because a shloman anyone can bring. Correct. Just hold on a second. My wife is calling me. Okay. Uh-huh. Can I have them? Never took them. Never took them. You have to go to air tags. Yeah. So I don't say, I mean, I'm just, I'm we, actually do have them, but we actually do have those tags, but we lost the control. Is it, isn't the, oh, is there a control for it? Oh, I have a different yeah, one. You've got, the a beeper. you've got a little beeper thing that, uh, Oh, my goes with a watch. It goes with my, my it's an Apple watch. Also, uh, so anyway, I thought a, a shlomo could be brought by anybody. Um, right? Yes, yeah, shlomo can be brought by anybody, but it has to be brought inside the mikdash. It has to be shechted in the mikdash, okay? Yeah. But if so, he, so, if he actually if he actually puts it on the mizbeach for the honor of of uh, of some person, then he's putter. That's not uh, uh, that's exactly the kasev that we learn over here. Um, because it's uh, with Shrit it says Dami Khashab La Ish and even if he shok if he's shokit for ish, but if he's but if it's for um but with putting it on the Mizbech, it says La Sos or Sol Hashem, making it for Hashem. He's only Chayev when he brings it on the Mizbech outside 
uh, if he's intending to give it to Hashem. It's uh, there's no there's no swara to it. It's just gezeres akasa kachaze. All right. Then there's the chomer va'aliyah. The, what's the stringency of putting it on the mizbeach? Shnayim she'achazu basakin v'shachatu p'turim. If two people held on to a shechita knife and shechted it, then they're pater because that's not a normal way of doing of doing the shechita. So because it's a shinoi, um, it's not. Uh, it's it's one person. It's not because it's a, a shinoi, but because it, 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 the, the 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 verses say uh, ish and not two people. It's it's one. So it's just one person. When they use the, the term um, in, in English, at least when they say this offering up, does that mean it's going on the, the mizbeach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to the mizbeach. Okay, okay. But if two people grab the the, the lum and put it onto the mizbeach, uh, they're chayivim. Both of them are chayiv, because because why? Again, the pasuk says ish ish asher yale. So not just one person. Even if two people participated, then they're both chayiv. They're both chayiv, and they both chayiv for a uh, karis. Chayiv karis for blizzard yeah. and chatas for shogeg. Okay. Okay. Hey, now, what happens if he puts a, he put one one limb on the mizbeach, and he went back and he put another limb on, on it afterwards? And he carried on going going forwards and backwards, putting limbs on this mizbeach. mizbeach. So Rabbi Shimon says every time he bring, he does a new a new action, even it's from though it's from the same animal, he's chayev an extra kratas. For each time he does, it says Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Yossi Yomer, Eino Chayev Ela Achas. It's only one. Only one Chayev, says Rabbi Yossi. Okay. And again, the Lamdos is, uh, um, again, is uh, from from a Pasuk about, or so he says, talking about that one that one animal. So he says, it's to, uh, he says that we learn that only one, uh, for each animal, you can only be Chayev once, even if you have brought multiple limbs up. But Eino Chayev Ad Shiyale Le Rosham is Be'ach. And he's only... Chayav once he puts it on top of an actual built mizbeach that he that he's made. Rabbi Shimon Omer Afilu Heila Ala Sela or Ala Even Chayav. So he brings from um from the case of Manoach and Shimshon. Remember we we learned this in the in the Haftarah a couple of weeks ago that when when he brought a when he brought a korban he put it put it on on a sela on a on a bedrock, um and used that as as mizbeach and said that that's if that's if the if Manoch treats that as a mizbeach during the time when vamas are permitted, then yes, the, the, even if you shifted it, even if you brought it up on a on a on a rock which is uh, which is made, which you have in mind to make as a mizbeach, is chayev. Okay, this is similar, it reminds you similarly of of um what, what we learned in in terms of uh, if um, I I made a vow and I said I'm I'm not going to eat drink or this. He was only he was only chayev once at the one time, but if he said I'm not going to eat. This is almost the same thing here. Very good, very good. So, so is it the? It's uh, it's not exactly the same, you know. But 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 you're right. You're looking like how many times, how many times are you chayev for, uh, for doing these things? Is it is it all included in the one iser? Correct. Okay, and uh, it it actually says the the Rambam writes in his parish on the Mishnah that all of these dinim that the, that the the Rabbanon are arguing about. They had a had a Kabbalah for, and they just some the psukim. They they used the psukim to justify their opinions. Um, so it's not it, it's it's difficult to say. Each each one of them has a different way of interpreting the psukim. Um, anyway, Mishnah uh, Dalad Echad Kodshim Kesherim Echad Kodshim Psulim Shehaya Psulin Bakod Psulan Bakodesh Bekrivan Bakutz Chayev. So it doesn't matter whether the Kodshim were kosher. Or if they were pasul, if as long as their psul happened uh, inside the the base of mikdash, and he brought them on the mizbeach outside, they, he, he's higher for bringing it outside. So, for example, if if they shechted the korban inside the inside the, the azara, and everything was fine up until the moment when it became tame, so now they say, ah, oh, done. You know, we can't put this onto the onto the mizbeach now. And some guy looking there is like, what a shame. What a shame to not bring this, this korban. They're taking it outside, and he comes and takes a limb from it and goes and puts it on his personal mizbeach. So it's tame, right. but he's still chayev, he's still chayev for bringing it. Okay. Um, now that's, remember, we, we made this dist this important distinction that something that's possible for the mizbeach, you're not chayev for bringing it outside. So, for example, if it was a balmum, 
before it was shechted. So if it was a palmum and he brought it outside the, outside the Azara, um, he's not high of caries for it. Okay, but in this case, if if the psul happened in the Kurdish, it's nonetheless he's nonetheless chayav. Hamale kazayas min haola umina emorin bechutz chayav. Even if he brings just a kazayas, uh, say he sneaks in and takes a little piece of uh, of flesh from uh, from, from what's going on to the mizbech and takes it outside to sacrifice himself, even a kazayas sized, he is chayav. Now moving on to other korbanos, not just the animal sacrifices, like. Uh, um, Kometz ve halavona ve hakatoris or minchas kohanim. So the um, the the, thing, the three fingers full scoop and the um, and levona frankincense, the the incense and the minchas kohanim, a mincha that is brought by kohanim which is entirely burned, minchas kohen mashiach, and the um, the offering of the of the kohen gadol, minchas nesachim, and the offering of uh, of libations. Shekriv echad mehem kazayis bakutz, and you took. And he, and he sacrificed even a kazayas outside of the the azara. He's chayav because it's a, that's a significant measure of something that is meant to be brought on the mizbeach. Rabbi Lazar poter ad shiakriv et kulo. He stand, He say, says no. You're only chayav for, for uh, hala if you actually uh, if you did the whole thing, not just the not just the small measure, because the entire because he is saying that. Um, Bringing up such a small piece does not uh, does not part of you from uh, it, it, it is is not sufficient inside the mikdash. So if you're just doing a small piece inside the mikdash, um, you, you you're not chayav for it. Um, okay, v'chulam v'chulam shehikrivan bifnim, but anything that has already been sacrificed inside v'shiyer b'hin kazais, and there was a there's a kazais left over. From uh from what from what was what went on the mizbeach, the ekriv and bechutz chayav, even if it's uh, even even if he if if it had even made it onto the mizbeach inside the mikdash, and somebody went and took a piece and took it outside and then put it onto a an outside, a personal altar, he's chayav. Bechulam shechasru kol shehen and anything that's that's lacking part of the shiur. Um, since it's not, uh, since it's not, um, it's not fitting to put on the mizbech inside. So, for example, um, let's say a korban mashiach, uh, the korban uh, korban coin mashiach has got a certain minimum shear. So, if it's lacking the shear, then it then it would not be allowed to be brought inside. And therefore, if he if he sacrificed it outside, he's pater because for the same reason as like a balmum, if you balmum is not allowed to go on the mizbech. Uh, then if he does it outside, he's putter. If the shear is lacking, it can't go on the uh, mizbech inside. Therefore, if he if he brings it outside, he's putter. I'm confused about something. Once once the, the once the temple was built, there were, there were no more personal bamos, right? But here they keep talking about bringing it outside and not putting it on the mizbech. So are we saying that there were that there were this was just a turn this was the turn time when they were in Shiloh well, or? No, 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 no. We're talking about in the mikdash. We're talking about taking the base of mikdash. If somebody still had a private altar, we're talking about a guy who's in a varia. This is somebody who's breaking the law by 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 um by bringing um by bringing something on on his personal mizbeach. So yeah, maybe he had he had left over from the time of the bamas. He's hankering back to it, and he uh, and he wants to uh, to bring it on bama. We're not allowed to bring things on bamas. Once the mikdash was built, that's it. Bamas are finished. But I never, I never saw a picture, a diagram where there were bamos outside. You know, seeing like barbecues all lined up. You know, ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Um, if somebody brings kodshim and their entrails outside the outside the mikdash, he's chayev. Um, okay, that will uh, right. This right. is somebody that um. If he brings everything. Because right. Uh, um, right. So, for example, he's doing shlamim. So, if he does everything outside, he's he's chayav because of the of the entrails which were supposed to go on the mizbeach. Those things are so even from a shlamim, the entrails are meant to go on the mizbeach. Okay, even though the meat is is intervening between the between the mizbeach and the entrails. Okay, he's doing the whole thing in one in one big thing on his on his mizbeach. Okay, so that that's another chatzitza that passes with haktar with with burning inside. So because it's min bemino, it's still all flesh. 
So therefore, right. it's, the, the, the meat does not intervene. It's, it's not considered a chatzitza. Okay? Mincha shelo nikmetza v'ikriva if b'chutz, if there's flour that hasn't yet been scooped, right? Normally, normally the coin has to scoop it and he puts the the, the, the comets onto the mizbech and everything else the coin him eat. Now, he's got, a, he's got a flour that was set aside for a korban and they haven't done the comets yet, okay? And, he's, and he burned this on this his mizbech outside. He's pater. Why is he pater for those? Because the because this mincha was not yet ra'oi, it, it, it hadn't it wasn't yet suitable to to go onto the mizbeach inside because the the comets hadn't been taken. Okay, uh, but kmatza if he took the three fingers full the chaza kumta lesocha and then he dropped the the comets and it fell back into the flower. Okay, v'kriva b'chutz and now he brings it outside. Now that's chayev. Because the comet has been designated. And once the comet has been designated, it's supposed to go on the Mizbeach. Yeah. Okay. And if he brings it up on the outer Mizbeach, now he is higher because that was something that was worthy and fitting to go on the Mizbeach. Yeah. Okay. Chazara. Perik Yud. Okay. Um, Yud Aleph. Whatever is more frequent than another precedes the other. The Tamit offering precedes the Musaf offering, the Musabit Musaf offering precedes the Rosh Kodesh Musaf. Offering and Rosh Kodesh Musaf offering, we see the Rosh Hashanah Musaf offering, as it is said, besides the morning all the offering, which is the continual all the offering, shall you offer these. Whatever is more sacred than other, other precedes the other. The blood of a Katos offering precedes the blood of an Ola offering because it affects atonement. The limbs of an Ola offering precede the sacrificial parts of a Katos because they are entirely assigned to the altar's fires. The Katos offering precedes an Ashim offering because the blood is applied to the four corners, of the, four horns, horns of the altar and upon the base. And an Ashim offering precedes the Toda and an Azus ram because it is the most holy offering. The Toda offering and the Nazis ram precede the Shalom offering because they must have been eaten on one day and they require loaves of bread. Shalom offerings precede the Bakor Bikor offering because they require a fourfold blood application to the altar, leaning of libations and waving of the breast and thigh. The Bakor offering precedes its uh, Misa offering because the sanctity begins at birth and is eaten by the Kohanim. And the Misa offering precedes the bird offering because it is slaughtered and it has been parts which are most holy, its blood and sacrificial parts. The bird offering. That, that's it. That's it. Okay. Um, Gimel. He who learns from his colleagues uh, from a single chapter, a single law, a single verse, and a single word, or even a single letter of Torah must treat him with honor. For we so find in the case of David, king of Israel, who learned nothing from uh, Antiphon except two things. Yet he called him his teacher, his mentor, and his advisor, as it is stated. But you are a man of my measure, my mentor, my advisor. He does not. And it does not matter, lend itself to a Kokomoma. If David, king of Israel, learned nothing from Aptifal except two things called him his teacher, his mentor, and advisor, one who learns from his colleague one chapter, one law, one verse, one word, or even one letter, how much more must he treat him with honor? And honor is due only for Torah, as it is stated. Honor is inherited by the wise, and the perfect inherit good, and the good refers only to Torah, as it is stated. For I have given you a good teaching, do not forsake my Torah. This is the way of Torah. Eat only bread with salt, drink water in small measures, sleep on the ground, and live a life of privation, and you should toil in Torah. If you do this, you are fortunate, and it's well for you. You are fortunate in this world, and it's well to you, with you in the world to come. Uh, Lewis. Oh, just a second. Um, did we... Can okay, this one? Um, sorry, I'm just the word done. Okay. Well, Dalit, okay. No, I was, hold on. We, I, I lost my focus there. Six, five, yeah. Okay. Can I only do two? Um, I'm not, which one Which one did you just finish? I wasn't focused. I finished the one that was Dalit. Love Dalit. Okay, so then you've got uh, hay as well. Yeah. Okay. Do not do not seek greatness for yourself and do not cover honor, cover honor. Do more than your learning, and if you do not desire the table of kings, for your table is greater than their table, and your crown is greater than their crown, and your employer can be applied upon relied upon you to pay you the wages of your labor. Okay, now, Karen, now, now it's hey, now it's good Uh really? All right. Torah is greater than the priesthood and the royalty, for royalty is acquired within 30 attributes, and the priesthood is acquired with 24 attributes, but the Torah is acquired with 48 things. And these are the th these are they. With study, with attentive listening, with articulation, with understanding, with discernment, with dread, and with fear, humility, with joy, with purity, with ministering to sages, with the analysis of colleagues, and with well sharp 
debate of students with a settled mind with knowledge of scripture, with the knowledge of mission, with a curtailing of business activity, with a curtailing of social activity, with a curtailing of pleasure and a curtailing of sleep, with a curtailing of conversation, with a curtailing of laughter, with slowness to anger, with a good heart and faith in the, in the sages, with acceptance of suffering. One who recognizes. Stop, stop there. Stop there. It's in, there's a break in the middle of those two. Okay. Um, Shavua Skimul Dalad. Uh, I swear that I will not eat any foods that are unfit to eat with drink beverages that are unfit to drink. He's exempt. I swear that I will not eat any never he ate, never illustrate his abominable creatures and flowing things. He is liable. Red Shimon exempts him. If he said, Karna, my wife derived pleasure from me if I have only, if I've eaten today and he had eaten the veil of strafers, abominable creatures, and crawling things, his wife is forbidden. The, the law applies both to matters pertaining to himself as well as the matters pertaining to others and the matters pertaining to sub substance and matters lacking substance. How so? If he said, I will swear that I will give you so and so and I will not give you so, give or that I will give or that I did not give and I will sleep and I did not sleep and I, that I slept and I did not sleep, then I will cast a pebble into the sea and then I will not cast or that I have cast or have not cast, where Rabbi Israel says he is liable only for oaths concerning the future, for avid states to do bad or to do good. Um, Akiva said to him, if, if so, we know only of things pertaining to doing good or bad, bad or good. But how do we know of things not pertaining to doing bad or good? He said to him from the extension of the verse, and he said to him, if the verse extended it in that regard, the verse extended it in this regard as well. If one swore to annul a mitzvah and did not annul it, he is exempt to fulfill a mitzvah and he did not fulfill it. He is exempt. For he might have been inferred that he'd be liable as the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda ben Bissara. To be Yehuda ben Bissara, if it were in an opinion, in an optional, optional manner, concerning which he was not endured from Mount Sinai, he is liable. Then for a mitzvah concerning that which is endured from Mount Sinai, he is not certain that he should not, that he should be liable. But he said to him, no, if you say this in regards to an optional oath, it is scripture. Because as, as scripture has made a negative equal to positives in that regard. We say this in the case of an oath to fulfill a mitzvah in which scripture did not make a negative equal to positive, for he swears to acknowledge and he does not acknowledge, he is exempt. Okay, that's uh, we're gonna have to stop there. I'm out of time. Okay, okay. have a great day. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow, Mr. Shem. Thank Cheers. you.